Work continues on the uh, Batmobile, and I've done a fair whack. I will admit that. Right, first and foremost, you can see that I've um, done the inserts now, both sides and on the top. And much like the Batwing, I painted them in the chrome, you know that, and then I dry brushed them in the X23. Starting from the inside, I'll just turn my plans around so I can show you. Starting from the inside, it tells you to glue the top one in first and then glue the two sides in after, so that's what I've done. So I glued the top one in first, I had a clamp coming from this way, I had a clamp from coming this way to do the corners, and then I had a clamp from coming through the cockpit to do that edge. And it's glued in lovely. Left it 24 hours to try, I took the clamps off and then I went with the, with the side ones. Now basically there's a little um, L shaped uh, thing moulded into the um, side uh, inserts to actually touch that edge there and then you just push it into the to make sure it lines in with the uh, rear fender well so that's what I've done and then clamped it there there and on the back with my little dinky clamps I did, them bo I did both sides at the same time, so I just put the one in first and then the other one and they're dried together. Now on that side you can see that it's dried to the underneath lip of the um, cockpit area. It's dried an absolute treat. But on this side for some stupid reason, you can see there's a gap. I don't know why it's done that because I pushed it all the way to the top and it's moved on me while the glue's drying. You can see on the rear wall of the fender well it's sticking out slightly so I might have to sand that down. I'm just hoping that gap there when I come to put that in I'm hoping it won't stick out I might have to sand the under I might have to sand that bottom lip there just to accommodate it but like I said they've gone in route not too bad apart from you can see the gap there. Right now I finished the cockpit off as well on the dashboard so basically with the dashboard, or the steering column, whatever, I put the three decals in, B, D and E. Little three dial decals, you could just make them out behind that uh, steering wheel. Like a little blue hue decals. In trouble is whoever sealed them in the Revel factory had over sealed them by two mil, so I had to cut right close to the edge of the decal. Because they wouldn't have fitted in the channels of the uh, dials, to be honest. So I sold those, microset micro them when I put them in, left it for a couple of hours and then micro sold them, left that for a couple of hours and just before I went to bed last night I sealed them with a gloss and then you can see there's a little bit of a sheen there so the, them have turned out really well. This morning before went, just, just before I went to work you can see that I've um, glued the, the steering wheel in, I painted that last night with the black and then the silver for the arms and I've picked out the back motif in silver and then I glued that into the steering column and then the actual where that little channel was I put a bit of blue tack there and a bit of blue tack there to stop it moving side to side because I couldn't tape it and then when I got on this about half an hour ago from work this dried an absolute treat and I've took the uh, plasticine out as well so now the the dashboard is now ready to be glued onto the cockpit. Talking about the cockpit, there's a decal there which acts as a radar and a rear view facing um, camera. If you remember from the film where uh, Riddler's and Two Faces goons were chasing Batman and he went up that alley and got the grappling up and went up the side of the uh, skyscraper with the apartment buildings. That's there. They said, set, sole, then sealed it. Um, the steering, the actual um, acceleration arm, says to leave that in chrome, but like I said, you know, I stripped it, I painted that in black because I was looking at some pictures on chickslovethecar.com and some um, Batman Forever footage and it's actually black. And then turning the plan round again, that one little decal there. And then you just, like I said, I've just got to put the complete dashboard in and all that. And also on the plans, it tells you to paint the grooves of the centre console in silver. So I've done that. And then again with my X23, just uh, dry brushed it on. And it 
looks just like it does in the film, not bad at all. So that's that. I've primed the uh, bottom of the chassis, put some tape around the uh, retainer clips for the uh, wheels because I didn't want any primer getting onto those. Talking about the wheels, uh, as you know, I painted them silver. Now, according to the plans, it wants you to put the the tyre against the rear wall of the uh, outer facing wheels and then put the back in. I didn't do that. And getting these on, getting these inside the tyres, the tyres are actually harder than there was on the AMT kit because they were actually quite soft on the AMT one. But these are really hard to get in. So what I did is I wrapped each, the bottom and the top in my tea towel and then got my G-clamp, whatever the hell I've put that, and used the pressure of the G-clamp to force the uh, wheels into the tyres. And luckily they went in and it didn't damage the bottom or the top of the the actual wheel so I didn't have to touch them up I was quite chuffed with that bitch to get them on but eventually they went on so that's where I'm sitting at the moment I'm getting there slowly stay with me right just a quick update for you as you can see I've now glued in the cockpit to the inside of the uh, main body and you can see that it's glued in an absolute treat. Not bad at all. Right, turning this over. Right, you can just see there, you've got the circular pieces that stick out of the uh, front of the cockpit. You've got like a pin that's on the inside of the body sticking up. So you just line those up and then you put the cockpit in there. The cockpit is actually a really snug fit against the side walls of the inserts and it gives it that extra bit of support. So instead of putting the glue on the top lip of the cockpit, I actually, when I test fitted it, I see where it actually touched it and then what I did on the inside of the, um, the body, I actually ran the glue around the edges. And then I met the holes with the pins first and then put that into place and then draw that down at the back here. Once all pushed into place, um, the actual, like I said, the side walls of the um, inserts are really snug fit and it actually touches the side of the uh, cockpit. So I was able to run a bit of extra glue around the edges just to give it, a, the outer edges, just to give it a bit of extra support. And I actually ran a bit of glue down those two channels there and it's held an absolute treat then what I did is um, I didn't tape the forward section I, I taped the back section I just wrapped the tape round round the side of the uh, the outer body and then wrapped it back into the cockpit to hold it into place at the back here I've took all the tape off now and like I said it's dried an absolute treat so now all that's done I can actually now mount the body onto the uh, onto the chassis. Get in there. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. You can see that the uh, top half of the body is now glued in to the chassis, as per the plans. Now the plans actually call for you to um, put the body onto the chassis and then put the fenders on but as you already know I've already put the fenders on so with the fenders being there um, this section here with the two arms um, inside the fender there's a little channel and then on the end of these arms it's like a tab so I'll push the uh, put a drop of glue in the uh, channel push the um, tab into place and then on this side I had to squeeze it out slightly pull it out slightly without trying to break the glue seal that's already on the fender that's gluing it to the main body and then just to uh, put a bit of glue into the channel and then maneuver that arm into the channel and as you can see it's glued in an absolute treat the rest of it's pretty much all snap fit you got the uh, bottom lip of the body there as you can see and then you've got the part of the fender well that's on the bottom of the chassis 
that actually glues into the side to the edge of the main body as you can see there now I snapped all that into place it went in dead easy so I just ran the glue in and then pushed it into place but the only trouble is the nose section kept wanting to pop up it didn't want to meet 100% so as you can see I've had to use I put some glue in on it on each side of the lip and just uh, use my tape to hold it down and it's held an absolute treat hopefully once I've removed that tape I mean so far it looks okay so the only thing I've got to do now you've got this massive gap here there's a hole there and that's where this rear section goes into so all I've got to do is just push that into there but it's not looking too bad so far stay with me right another quick update for you I've done a bit more construction on the Batmobile namely pushing the putting the rear section into place and the rear winged fender wells as per the plans I haven't put the jet exhaust on yet but just like I said just push that into place with the completed floor and the upper body and then you've got the wing fender wells so when I test fitted the body without the floor that fit perfect but with the floor in I had to snap it into place, I had to push it into place with a bit, tiny bit of force, but eventually it snapped into place. So with my snap blade, I went back underneath and it was actually easy to remove to put it back in. Then I ran all the glue all the way around there, around the bottom, even and there's a snap clip built into the rear section that actually snaps and clips into the uh, floor. So I ran the glue all the way around there as well. And then I ran the glue there and there, and then snapped that back into place, and I didn't need to tape it, it held itself in. So while that was drying, I then did the wing fender wells. Now, I honestly thought, when I put those on, as you can see by the plans, you just put them on the edges. I thought that these were gonna overlap that section. That's why I didn't primer it. But like I said, you just put them on the edge. Now on the insides, there's a tab there if you can just make it out. There's like a hole, a channel built into the fender on the um, floor, the chassis. There's one there and there's one just up here. And then the tabs are actually on the um, wing fenders themselves. So I just push, put, ran the glue all the way around, pushed them into the channels, and then just pushed them into place to make sure they didn't look on the piss or anything. And then just using my tape, as you can see, I've actually held them down because they kept wanting to come off that way. So that's what I've used the tape for. So now all I've got to do is just remove the tape and then I can actually get these ready for primer. But construction is almost complete. Stay with me. Right, as you can see, I've now primed the rest of the parts, you know, namely the rear section and the wing fender wells. I've also primed the nose section. I've sanded all that off with the glue marks but you can see I've still got a seam issue to deal with I just thought I'd sand off the glue marks first because there was a bit there was stuck to a bit of primer so that's that done but like I said you can see that line that remains so I've got to sand that down but you can also see the massive gap issues I've got to deal with when it comes to that rear section so I've obviously got to fill all that in and possibly we've got to fill a bit down that line there and fill a bit down that line there hence why I've removed the masking tape around the cockpit because even though it's covering all the uh, the inserts up it actually obscured where the line is also you can see around the back here as well I've got our gap issues to deal with there and there and the line round to the back but 
It's not looking too bad. Nate's all Nate's all primed. Not bad at all. Stay with me.